Welcome to another episode of the MH Energy Exchange. I'm here with Senator Troy Balderson. Troy, thanks for joining us thanks today. Thanks for having me, Mike. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about 2016 this year, uh, as far as what's going on with shale, and then we'll talk a little bit next episode about 2017. But, you know, so talk about back in the district, maybe to start. I mean, what did you see in 2016 with your constituents? Because you live in the heart of the shale play. I, I do live in the heart of shale play, and I probably, I mean, the biggest thing that we've seen in 2016 is, is the downturn and the effect that it has had on some of the communities um, there. Uh, with with jobs and um, you know people that's their number one concern is, is having a job um, but the layoffs that have been affected by that um, in my hometown I have Halliburton they laid off a significant amount of uh, employees I also have another um, small service company producer services that um, was a great up-and-coming company uh, in my hometown um, that has you know done a pretty major layoff uh, live where again? Zanesville Ohio right. and you know, they have gone outside the box um, and, and moved some of their operations uh, to where there is some activity here in the United States. So um, that's kept them going. Uh, but, um, you know, with the lack of activity in the eastern part of Ohio here now in 2016, it's definitely played a major role. So as you drove around your district, in what counties do you represent? I represent uh, Morgan County, Guernsey County, Muskingum County, Fairfield County, Hawking County, parts of Athens County and Pickaway County. Okay, so you're driving around. I mean, it, is it noticeable, the downturn in the level of activity? Very noticeable. Um, it, it's, you know, the truck traffic is, is, is way down. Um, the hotel traffic is way down. Uh, restaurant traffic. Um, I, I know in Guernsey County alone, the bed tax uh, in 2015 from 2010 back in the boom um, is down almost a million dollars. So that's significant to communities. And, and counties as well, have, has, have they seen a downturn in, say, sales tax revenue? They have seen a sales tax revenue. I was a little surprised. I mean, not as significant as I thought it might be, but there's definitely, it's all down. Okay. Um, and the unemployment, um, you know, has high. The numbers were uh, back in 2008, 2009, moving up drastically. Um, started to come down just a little bit. So how did, so clearly you, you were seeing a downturn back in the district. So how did that play out in the debate in Columbus as you took on some of the, and maybe start out with what were some of the policy issues that were discussed in Columbus in 2016? In 2016, predominantly, um, obviously we were dealing with the severance tax issue again. Um, that conversation seems to come up more than once throughout a GA. Um, and I'm sure that we'll be seeing it again in the future, which you and I are going to talk about in a, in a few minutes. But um, the unionization piece, uh, drilling in state parks, um, which is legislation that we passed back in 2010, uh, House Bill 133. And at that time I was in the House, and, and we are still not drilling in state parks, uh, nor do we have a commission to drill in state parks yet. Um, you know, and I, I think that conversation needs to happen. So, and, and you hear that in the district. I mean, people are aware of that, those things. Um, and, you know, maybe not precise as you might like to say they are, but they are aware of it and, and they're conscious of, you know, how it's affecting them. So in a downturn environment, when, when an issue like severance tax comes up, what, what do people, how do people talk about that issue when the industries? P people in the district talk very negatively about the severance tax um, and, you know, about so increasing the severance about increasing the severance tax um, you know and, and part of their conversation is look we're the Appalachia region we haven't had anything for such a long time this is an industry that we have here our coal um, has gone down drastically employment um, but you know we are finally starting to generate funds in local communities uh, and, and, and people are working which generates funds in families mm -hmm. Um, and then to have that conversation come up that we're going to raise tax on an industry uh, that is doing okay. But to do that, raise that severance tax, and the reason that we're doing it um, is to cut income tax. And I think that's very challenging for us to take on, you know, cutting a commodity price product and, and, and basing that off an income tax cut. Right. So I guess last question for this segment about 2016. So talk a little bit about the uh, local earmark and how important that was as far as the severance tax proposal. You know, when that proposal came up, um, 
you know, they, it ranged anywhere from 20% for the locals up to 22, 23%. Um, the communities didn't like that. That wasn't enough. I mean, that to, in their eyes, that was not the fair share for what they're giving up. Um, you know, obviously there's, there's infrastructure issues that are still going on in the district. Um, and, you know, that's what they, these communities wanted to reinvest in. So they wanted that money to reinvest into the infrastructure that they currently have there and the lack of infrastructure that they have. So um, that earmark was not, not satisfactory to them. So if you had, one more question. Yes. So if you had the right earmark percentage, you know, I, I, I've always heard about the boom bust cycle in Appalachia. And if you had a strong earmark, could it mitigate that boom bust cycle, having a, a pot of money to reinvest into the region? I, I don't think so, because the boom and the bust, um, it can, the, the bust can be really big. And, and I don't know that um, we can calculate that and, and base our decisions or even policy off, you know, the economic times and, and what's going to happen. So um, I think we need consistency. And we're, we're moving along as the conversation goes on now. Um, industry obviously is slowing down, but it would, when it was moving forward very aggressively, um, local leaders and community leaders, chambers, county commissioners, were doing the right thing. I mean, they were actually reinvesting into their infrastructure. So we gave them that opportunity and they took advantage of it. And sometimes, you know, here in Columbus, we don't think they're capable of making some of those decisions. And they are. They know what their communities need. They live there. Okay. All right. Well, that's about all the time we have for this segment. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, at the MH Energy Exchange.